This past weekend, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny released in theaters. In preparation for the film, I started reviewing each of the Indiana Jones films. I wasn't able to get them all reviewed before the movie came out, so I'm trying to quickly play catch up. Today, we're talking about Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. My name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your thoughts on Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. My thoughts aren't the right thoughts, they're just my thoughts and I would love to hear yours. Also, you can check out my other Indiana Jones content right up here where I've reviewed the other films, done rankings, and then also did a video on how to fix Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull that was from very early in my channel and it's a different type of video so it's kind of fun to watch it just to see how my channel has grown and changed throughout the years. With all that said, let's get started talking about Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And for me, this is just a perfect follow-up to Raiders of the Lost Ark that manages to deliver all the things that I loved about Raiders but also tell a very different type of story with Indiana Jones's motivation his attitude feeling very different because of what they did with this film. It's also one of my earliest memories of going to the theater it came out in summer 1989. And that's where I really start having memories of going to the movies and falling in love with franchises. And this movie was one of those movies that caused me to go, Oh, I love movies. Oh, I love to, obsess about movies and dive into them. So even in that regard, it's a very important film for me, my life and shaping me into who I am. And when I say this movie delivers everything that you wanted from a Raiders follow-up, it gives you more globetrotting adventure. It gives you more of the little gags in the sense of humor to it. You get more of these memorable, iconic action set pieces. You get another fantastic John Williams score that is memorable in its own right while bringing back the main Raiders themes as well. And then ultimately, it, it, well, it gives you a MacGuffin that is interesting. That's something that you've, you've probably heard of, primarily because of Monty Python. It does a very different version of the Holy Grail than Monty Python did. But what takes this movie and it makes it not just like, yeah, it's a great follow up, you know, not as good as the original, but all the stuff that you want. But the movie that the, the element that just pushes it up and keeps it right on par in my mind with Raiders is the introduction of Henry Jones Sr., Indiana Jones's dad, played by Sean Connery. And this was just kind of the, the just the right idea where we'd been on two adventures with Indiana Jones, seeing him as this guy that is always in over his head, but always is able to keep his cool. And there's there's arcs in there, as I've talked about in the previous two um, reviews, that there's ways in which he grows and changes in those movies through his motivation becoming more heroic by the end of them. But he kind of starts as a bit of an antihero with the way that he's kind of designed and so how do you create a story that takes this guy that is just so confident and shows him vulnerable? Who's the person that you can introduce into the story that gets him a little off? The person that he he has insecurities in regard to them, that has unresolved tension from the past, that he needs to show respect to and doesn't stand up, just overtly stand up and talk down to them. Who is that person? His dad. What's the motivation that is more personal. It's not about fame and glory. It's not about this belongs in a museum, but it's personal to him. His dad has gone missing. And who do you get that can stand toe to toe with Harrison Ford? That by the time this movie came out is one of the biggest movie stars in the world, like probably top five movie stars in the world. By the time this movie came out, Indiana Jones, top action star. Who, who do you put up against him? Well, the original action hero, the original spy, the original James Bond, Sean Connery. And we discussed it many times before. It's been said many times before, but Steven Spielberg wanted to direct a Bond film. Lucas said, I've got a better idea, Indiana Smith, that turned into Indiana Jones. This was their version of Bond. It's got the globe trotting. It's got the adventure. It's got the girls. It's got all that stuff. And now 
It even has James Bond himself. And one of the funny details in here, Sean Connery's only 12 years older than Harrison Ford. And so not actually old enough to be his dad, but because of the way these two men aged, because of the way that they present the two men, it's absolutely believable that Sean Connery could be Harrison Ford's dad in this film. And the piece that is just so lucky here is that they have such great chemistry. They play off each other so well. Both of them are funny, but in different ways. Both of them are people of action, but in different ways. Both of them are incredibly intelligent, but in different ways. And so it's just as as wildly different as their relationship is from probably our relationship with our parents. There's these relatable elements of generational um different worldviews, different perspective, different phases of life, different obsessions, childhood wounds, all of that stuff's in there that's so relatable while they're on this fantastical adventure, globe-trotting, battling Nazis, trying to get this Christian relic that will give you eternal life. And because of that, it adds this emotion into the, the series that, that just wasn't there in the first two films. And, you know, the first two were there a lot of fun, exciting, thrilling, some romance. This one adds that other layer of family, our upbringing, our parents. And there's other layer to it. So when you get into the third act of this film and you have an Indiana Jones that has always struggled to get the respect of his father. Classic, relatable situation. And it's not that his father doesn't care about him. His father's just not a very good dad and isn't wired to be a good father in any traditional sense. But he raised him to have all the skills that have made him interesting to us. So it's that interesting dynamic. But his dad doesn't respect him on his own terms. Indiana Jones wants to be called Indiana Jones. He picked his own name for himself and created this identity. And he, he doesn't want to be called Junior. He doesn't want to be called Henry. And you get into the third act of this film where they've been butting heads. His Part of the conflict between the two of them their entire life is that his dad was more obsessed with the Holy Grail than he was with raising him. And you get to the end of this film and you have this moment where briefly Indiana is drawn, he's tempted to grab the Grail. He's in a place where it's right there and maybe he would have been able to grab it. Maybe he could be Elsa, not tall enough, not long enough arms, didn't have the position to be able to grab. So she fell to her doom. Maybe Indy can grab it. He's trying to, and his dad is holding his hand, yelling at him. Give me your other hand. But then he pauses like Indiana. And he finally addresses him by the name that he's chosen for himself. He says, let it go. The thing that the dad has been obsessed with, not Indiana, the dad has been obsessed with in this moment. It's not about that. You're obviously more important. Don't risk this. And he pulls him up. And so you, you have this just arc that's not just one character. It's about a relationship being mended. And there's something very powerful about that, very emotional about that. And that's the thing that I think kind of in its own way elevates this movie. Because there's a, you could look at this movie and they went, mm, Temple of Doom wasn't as well received. It was too dark. And so then they overcorrected and so then put too much humor into this movie, perhaps. Oh, we got the Nazis again as the villain, another Christian artifact. Mm, are we just rehashing Raiders? And I think there's some validity to where someone could see that. I think the movie itself is good enough that that doesn't, I, I don't think that really applies. Where movie kicks off and it makes it clear we're diving into Indiana Jones and why he is who he is. We see him as a child uh, or a teenager played by River Phoenix. If you don't know, this is that's Joaquin Phoenix's brother. He died in the early 90s of a drug overdose. And he'd been in a movie before with Harrison Ford, playing Harrison Ford's son. And so when they turn in the script and said, hey, Harrison, we're going to have a segment that has cold open is actually you as a teenager. Harrison Ford goes, you should look at River Phoenix. He played my son. It, he he absolutely could pull off young me. And that's what happened. And, and he did a fantastic job. 
And so you get this cold open that establishes kind of his adventurous spirit, his desire to have things in museums. And then likewise, the father that's absent, that sends him away, sets the tone for what this movie is. That's very different from the adventure that we got in the previous two films and very different arc for Indiana Jones and the motivation. Once again, it's about rescuing his father. Like, I'm not in this for the grail. I'm in this to save my father. And it's his dad who has to convince him to continue on the journey to stop the Nazis and discuss the fact that, like, if the Nazis get this and they're able to use it, it's the end of the world. His father has to pull him in on that the, the, the actual heroic side to this quest. And so I think it just makes for a very different type of adventure that plays very differently. And uh, also because there's so much more humor in this one, I think it's a more consumable film than, than Raiders, where it, it, this is by far the one that we put the most on in our household. My, my wife loves this one. This was, is easily her favorite because it's just so lively and fun and funny uh, while being action-packed, having that family dynamic inside of it that just makes for a great adventure. Now, when it comes to our action sequences, I don't know that they're as iconic as Raiders or even necessarily the Temple of Doom, but they're just right below them. You remember the train sequence and uh, with young Indy running on top of a train, getting involved with lions and grown men trying to kill him. And it stands out in your mind. It's memorable. Uh, and it also creates a comparison to where I don't think the Dial of Destiny train sequence will be memorable. You'll remember they did World War II, but you won't specifically remember that train sequence because they weren't on a train. They were on like in front of a green screen or whatever. Whereas here, this movie that's almost 35 years old, completely convincing that they're on top of a train because I'm pretty sure they were on top of a train. Then you have the boat chase that once again, there's a memorable shots of the boat getting smashed and exploding. Memorable sequences with the tank and him fighting people, battling towards a cliff, almost getting smashed into the wall. You remember that? And even the end of the movie, it's not a big action sequence, but it's thrilling in its own way as you have to survive all of these different tests and games. And you remember the blades spinning. You remember the floor giving out. You remember the step of faith. You remember choosing the cup. All of it is memorable stuff, iconic stuff that stands with you. And that one at the end in particular gave me my favorite um, gif with the uh, section where he goes, you have chosen wisely. That's my favorite gift to use on Twitter. I just really I did my ranking a few days back and I forgot to cut that in. Oops, sorry, internet, I forgot to cut in something. So there might be a joke in there that doesn't make a ton of sense. But I, I think for me, this is the perfect follow-up. It delivers all of the things that you want that were in the original that you loved, but then adds new layers with bringing the father into it, having more humor, but being just as memorable in so many other regards. So I think this is the perfect follow-up to Raiders of the Lost Ark. And depending on which ranking I'm doing, sometimes this one comes out on top over Raiders because I just think it is more watchable and has that little extra emotion thrown into it. Overall, I'm gonna give this movie an A plus on the entertainment scale. It's a 10 out of 10, and this is a must watch movie. Hey, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this video. You can check out more Indiana Jones reviews right over there. You can check out that video on um, how to fix Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Soul had to pause and think about the title of that one, but it's right down there. Thank you so much for watching. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.